Hello everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about the Curve Wars. Now, if you're not familiar with the Curve Wars, at a high level, it's essentially a protocol-to-protocol -protocol battle to control CRV emissions. And of course, CRV is the governance token of Curve. Now, I'm gonna go over what all of that means, and I think the best place to start is on Curve's homepage here. So, you've probably been here before, and you've noticed that Curve has all of these liquidity pools available here. So let's just take the MIM pool, for example. You can see here that the rewards APR is between 6.11% and all the way up to 15.27% of Curve rewards. So there are two considerations here. The first is what determines the rewards level for this pool, and the second is what determines what range of this APR you're going to receive as the user. So to answer the first question on how Curve decides to distribute rewards for each pool, they hold a gauge vote every week. Now this gauge weight vote essentially allows Curve governance to direct rewards in the Curve token. VCRV holders, that's vote escrowed Curve holders, which I'll get into in just a minute, vote on where the new rewards will go for each pool. You can see here on this pie chart that there's a ton of different pools that are incentivized and you can see the various percentage of rewards that go to each pool. So here's Frax at 16.28%, that's a large one. There's MIM, very large at 24.64%. And so you can see here that different pools get different votes allocated to them, which controls the rewards. So now remember, going back to that homepage, you remember there was a range of rewards that you as the user could receive, and the protocol decides that based on how much curve you've locked up on the curve platform. So you can see here on this curve page, uh, let's just say I have a thousand CRV in my wallet. I could decide to lock those CRV for one month, three months, six months, a year, and all the way up to four years, which is the max. Now, the more curve tokens I lock up, which become vote escrowed curve tokens, that means I'll get a higher boost for providing liquidity on the platform. In addition, it also means I'll be able to control where the rewards go for each pool. So if I lock up a ton of VE CRV, that means I'll have a lot of control over where the platform allocates curve emissions. Now, these are the fundamentals of the curve wars. You can see that the more CRV you hold, the more VE CRV you can get, which means you can control emissions on Curve and get boosted rewards. Now this means that different projects want a ton of Curve voting power, just because that means they can control emissions, get a ton of revenue, etc. So let's visualize what this actually looks like on Dune Analytics. Well, if you look at this graph here in the middle left, you can see that Convex's share of VE CRV has been steadily increasing over the last several months. Right now, this dashboard is saying that Convex owns 43% of all VE CRV, which means Convex has a ton of power over curve emissions and curve boosting. So now that we've seen that Convex holds a lot of VE CRV, let's take a look at how that actually impacts emissions and rewards for Convex users. So I've just pulled up the MIM pool here. You can see Convex is giving users about a 22.7% APR on MIM stablecoin deposits. And if we compare that to Curve here, We'll find the MIM pool, and you can see that MIM is only allocating between 6.25% to 15% in rewards on Curve if you stake directly on Curve. So a couple things are happening here. If we go back to the convex pool, part of this APR is coming from the Curve boost, meaning that convex is able to boost Curve rewards with, with its locked up VE CRV, and in addition, convex is minting and distributing CVX or convex governance token rewards, which stack on Curve rewards. All of this creates a flywheel effect where a lot of liquidity goes through Convex, which means Convex is now able to capture more CRV. So because Convex has all of this locked up VE CRV, they've now said, well, what if we let the community decide with the CVX governance token where we want to allocate our VE CRV votes? This also opens it up to other protocols to basically bribe Convex holders to vote to incentivize the pools they want them to vote on. So you can see here on Convex's site, you can lock up the Convex token for a period of 16 weeks, and that gives you voting power over Convex's VE CRV. Now, a lot of different protocols want incentivized liquidity for their tokens, so they're now bribing CVX holders to vote for their curve allocations. Uh, so we can see this on the Vodium tab. Unfortunately, there are no active gauge proposals right now, so I can't show you that. But there's this website, Llama Air Force, where you can see what the bribes have amounted to last week. So on this website here, we can see how much these protocols are actually paying Convex holders to vote for their curve pools. Uh, you can see Frax is the biggest briber here with about $7.5 million of bribes in the last round. Now the total number of bribes was about 20 million in the last round, which equated to 87 cents for every locked up Convex token. 
Now this is actually a lot of revenue for convex holders. So 87 cents every two weeks per convex comes out to about a 50% APR. And you can see that because the convex finance token is priced at about $47 now, and they're getting bribes that equate to about a 50% APR over one year. So what's the rationale for these protocols spending all of this money to bribe convex holders? Well, I found this great article, which I will share you all with you all in the link below. And I highlighted one very important part which is that currently, if a protocol pays $1 in bribes to CVX holders, that underlying pool receives $4.50 in curve emissions. What that essentially means is that each dollar that a project pays out to incentivize convex holders to vote for their pool, they're getting about $3.15 in curve emissions for doing so. So it's a profitable activity for different DAOs and projects. I recommend you read the whole article, but the big takeaway here is that if they're getting $4.15 per each $1 bribe, the competition between bribers is going to increase, which means more rewards to convex holders. So in my opinion, this is all very fascinating, but I think it could get even more exciting over the next few months just because of what Curve V2 offers. So Curve V2 was announced several months ago, but essentially you can see here the TLDR is that Curve V2 allows for non-pegged assets to be paired. So you don't need to just pair stable coins on Curve or pegged assets like ETH and staked ETH. You could actually do pools with very different price ranges. The best example of this is the Tri Crypto Pool, which holds BTC, ETH, and USDT. None of those are meant to be pegged to the same value, but Curve can actually support the pegs around those different assets and concentrate liquidity around the price. This is obviously in large competition with Uniswap v3 because they're concentrating liquidity, and Curve is just kind of gearing up for that now. Uh, they only have a few pools here that support this v2 model. One of them is notably the ETH convex pair, so ETH and convex are obviously not pegged, but Curve can support concentrated liquidity there, and of course they also have the tri crypto pool that I mentioned before. So what I think we're going to see in the future on this Vodium platform is that non-pegged asset pairs are going to be bribing convex holders to vote to incentivize their pair. On this channel, I've talked a lot about how liquidity mining is going to change, and I just don't think it makes sense for a project to pay for its own liquidity mining campaign when they could just bribe convex holders to incentivize a curve pool. Based on the data we've seen, there's just a lot more value there. So how can this whole narrative fall apart? What are the big risks here? Well, in my opinion, the core risk is really the Curve DAO token's price. Once that price starts to go down, it's less profitable for people to bribe convex holders, for people to lock up CRV, and really try to get those Curve emissions. See, Curve has created this kind of flywheel effect where as long as the Curve price is doing well, the emissions are valuable, but if this core token starts to go down in price, then really there's no point of trying to get all of these emissions. If we went into a multi-year bear market, I would be really curious to see what happened to the curve token. If its only purpose is to direct where the curve rewards go, but the curve rewards are no longer valuable, well, what's the point of it then? Now, of course, you could argue that curve governance allows you to potentially get fees from the platform, but I think the fees aren't a race to the bottom and it's probably not going to be a sustainable model going forward. I don't think the fees from the Curve platform can justify a $21 billion fully diluted valuation, at least not yet and not in the near term. Now the other risk here, which I think is much less of a problem, is if Uniswap starts taking the market back with their concentrated liquidity platform. Uniswap is a share of stablecoin volume, which again is most of Curve's volume, has been growing. I think the real catalyst here would be if Uniswap decided to incentivize that liquidity. If they did that, they could start taking even more market share from Curve, which would of course depress the price of the CRV token and just make this whole flywheel less attractive. That said, Uniswap governance has been traditionally non-existent and the Uni Treasury is really just a slush fund for other DeFi initiatives, so I don't really think that's a big threat. Again, the price of this CRV token is going to be the core metric to look at for the health of the Curve Wars. As of now, I would say the Curve Wars are definitely bullish for Curve and Convex. As we saw earlier, it's profitable to bribe convex holders, so I suspect bribes will continue to increase. Now, I know we covered a lot here, so I just want to remind you all that we have a great Discord community where we're always discussing these things, which is going to be linked below. In addition, there's a link to try Nansen out below as well, so feel free to check out Nansen if you want to look at the analytics behind these tokens. With that said, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and have a great day.